Hi, YouTube. Steve Ballantyne from Mount Vernon Brewing Company. Uh, it's a cold Saturday here in Ohio. Uh, not much to do outside. Uh, we're not allowed to leave our house anyway. So we're going to bottle some beer. So, hey, let's bottle beer. All right, bottling day. We're going to go down our list of things we need. We need a cooler. Don't necessarily need a cooler, but that's what I'm going to use because we can fit a lot of these bottles into this when we're going to sanitize them. So um, a lot of the brew kits say use a bucket, but you can only get about three bottles in one of these buckets and they're not going to be fully submerged. So if you have a cooler, it is ideal for sanitizing your bottles. So we got some corn sugar that I have measured out. That's about 2.37 ounces is what I need uh, for this very tiny batch of Weizen beer. Um, and that's only going to take, I don't know, 12 bottles, maybe less, uh, a whole two gallons in that thing. But I've also got a five gallon guy, which uh, came down to four gallons. And so that's why we have this huge stack of beer bottles. So everything you need is here. Um, we have some rubber gloves. I like to keep my hands, uh, out of that sanitizer fluid because it really dries your hands out. Uh, got our bottle capper, some tubing bottling wand, a uh, big spoon that we're going to use to actually stir our sugar into our uh, uh, finished beer. Um, we've got one of these little guys. This is, a, uh, this is a bottling wand. So you push on it and the, the beer comes out into a bottle. Um, and then this guy, this is actually our pump. We're going to, or siphon. So we're going to use that to suck the beer out of this vessel and into one of these sanitized buckets. This is a bottling bucket, and the only thing that really makes it special is it's got one of these at the bottom. Um, and some home brewers have taken to uh, fermenting their beer inside of one of these instead of one of these because they figured out that you can just open the plug and start bottling right away. You don't necessarily need to take it from here to here. But there is a reason we do that. Um, when you transfer from one big bucket to another bucket, um, you're leaving uh, a lot of the garbage behind. There's going to be some trube down in the bottom of that bucket. Um, not a whole lot because this is actually a secondary fermentation, which means we've already moved it once. But uh, the other reason that you move from one bucket to the other is you actually reactivate the yeast just a little bit. You know, you get things moving around again. And that's important for bottling because uh, we're going to ferment or carbonate in bottle. Uh, that means we're going to create a, a pressurized process where the yeast reactivates, um, eats the sugars, produces uh, oxygen, and that oxygen is not going to escape our bottle, and that's how we're actually going to uh, carbonate. Kind of cool. So this is uh, some bottle caps, big bag of caps, some corn sugar, which I already uh, pre-measured, and uh, oh yeah, this little guy. This I got for like $3 off Northern Brewer, and it is a lifesaver. You put this on the edge of your bucket. And you can run your, your line through there, and then you can kind of work your siphon one-handed, and your line's not going to jump out and dump beer on the floor. Um, if you accidentally dump beer on the floor, uh, you have to get one of these. This is an old dog, and she will lap up every bit of beer that lands on the floor. See, right now she's resting like my yeast at the bottom of that bucket. All right, so uh, first thing we should do is boil this stuff. This has to be boiled for about four and a half to five minutes. Again, that's just to sanitize it because we're going to dump it right into our beer before we bottle. So the boiling is just to uh, get the bugs out as they say. And uh, I like to try to do that first if I remember because it's got to boil and then cool off. We absolutely cannot put boiling water into our bottling bucket because we're going to damage the yeast in that process. So this has to boil then cool off, then get mixed with the beer. So we'll boil that first. Nothing exciting going on here. We're just boiling uh, corn sugar. So once that gets boiling, I'm gonna set my timer for four minutes or so. All right, while we wait for water to boil, um, let's go ahead and work on our sanitizing solution. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Oh boy. Got it. Okay. So we're going to mix one tablespoon per one gallon of water for our sanitizing solution. Now, look at me, look at me wasting this. What am I doing? Three, 
three tablespoons. So I'm going to put three gallons of water in here. Reason I mix three gallons of water at one time, it's crazy, right? But no, because uh, I've done this several times, and this fills my cooler to right about a year. And so I can actually sanitize eight bottles at once in this cooler. It's the perfect size. So I'm going to get that mixed up and dumped in there. Look at this. Look at me go. It's a good time to tell you that it does not have to be hot water. Cold water is fine. I generally go with like a, somewhere in the middle. I like warm water because it seems like the sanitizer mixes up a little better. But yeah, the sanitizer is going to kill any bacteria. We don't have to worry yeah, about the water Yeah, I'm at the three not a gallon water mark. And I'm just going to stir the sanitizer up and try to shake out the lumps. And uh, this is just a lot easier doing a bucket. So I'm going to do this before I dump it in the cooler. All right. Now, we're going to get our sanitized water into our cooler. And I'm just going to pour it nice and slow. And almost every single time I end up with a little bit of sanitizer stuck to the sides of my bucket. That's okay. I'm going to use this bucket again uh, in the process. So next step of this is we got to uh, get these bottles sanitized. So generally when we're finished with the beer, uh, we rinse the bottle out really good, put water in it, shake it out, get all the stuff out the bottom, make sure that it's mostly clean, and then we dishwash them. And dishwashing uh, is not going to sanitize them. This does. So take them out of the dishwasher, stick them in a box, throw them somewhere convenient like a mudroom, and then uh, come bottling day, you got to sanitize these. So we're just going to dump them in the sanitizer, kind of hold their heads underwater. And like I said, I can get about eight bottles in one of these, uh, which uh, makes this go faster. Once I get eight bottles in here, I will set my little kitchen timer for three minutes. They say two to three minutes of contact will kill all the bacteria in these bottles. Um, and it does take me... I don't know, at least 30 seconds to get four bottles uh, in here and uh, emptied of air. So usually around the two and a half minute mark, I start taking the bottles that I first put in and pulling them out. Because that's been two minutes, 30 seconds. So we're going to repeat that until we get through all of these bottles. This is probably the lengthiest, uh, most unfun part of this process. And... Uh, that's why we try to do at least eight bottles at once. All right. While our bottles are sanitizing over there, got my kitchen timer going. This guy finished his four minutes of boiling. And this is just priming sugar and about one cup of water. And this has to be cool. You cannot put boiling water in there. So uh, we're going to just put that down there to help it cool off. That's just cold water in uh, my sink. So while that's going... We'll uh, keep doing this part. All right. Now we have to empty our bottles out. They've been in the solution for just about three solid minutes. Give them a couple taps, get most of the water out, and then uh, I'm just going to put them on the counter. So some people will use a bottling tree. A bottling tree is just a, looks like a little plastic Christmas tree, and you slide your bottles onto it, and it just lets the uh, solution come out. And it's got a little reservoir at the bottom that you can use to just dump right back in here. So they're handy. Uh, they are like, I don't know, $30 to $50. And what I found is uh, just shaking the water out, setting these on the counter, works about just as good. Uh, whatever is left inside is probably going to settle at the bottom. And then my uh, better half, who is also my filmographer uh, today, uh, she just gives them a quick shake onto the floor and just gets the last couple drops out. So there we go. So this is uh, it's time consuming. You can see we've got a huge stack of bottles to go through. So we're not going to film this entire thing. Uh, we'll just get back to you when all the bottles are sanitized. We're finally, finally done sanitizing our bottles. Still got three gallons of sanitizer fluid in the cooler. We need to put our beer that we're going to be bottling, which is going to come out of this oh so cute little brown barrel. This was a Mr. Beer kit. Uh, I think the rest of the kit's still around somewhere, maybe in parts in the basement. Um, but I, I love, I love uh, fermenting in this silly little thing. It's really easy to clean out. 
you know, you put some dish soap in there, you rinse it out. When it's time to sanitize, you put sanitizer in there and you shake it around. And uh, there isn't even a, a bubbler. Most, uh, most of the time when you're fermenting, you've got a little bubbler on top to let the air out. Uh, and this guy doesn't because uh, it, it's just a lid that just doesn't fit tightly. That's it. It's, it's a lid that intentionally doesn't fit right. And also it has a little nozzle on it, which is really cool. So when it comes time to uh, get your beer out of this and into a bucket, uh, instead of having to run a siphon down in there and, and pull it out, we just uh, pop the plug. Also, I don't know if you noticed, but it's got a little reservoir in the bottom, which serves as both a cute stand. Uh, it's like a, a little barrel stand, but uh, that also keeps all the trube, all that uh, st uh, the stuff that you don't want in your beer. It just sort of sinks down to the bottom and settles there. So nowadays we buy conical fermenters. We spend a bunch of money on them. Uh, this guy came as part of a kit, and I think you can actually buy these on Craigslist for, I don't know, five to eight bucks. Probably find them at yard sales. Uh, so they're fun. They're useful. Useful little containers. Anyhow, I now have to get some of this liquid into here, so I'm just going to dump the cooler in here and, and shake this around and get this thing clean. So this has to be sanitized because our beer is going to go in here. Um, I also, at the same time, need to sanitize any instruments I'm now going to use because once I break the top off of this, uh, we got to be real careful not to infect our beer. So, uh, we're also going to sanitize one of these. I'm actually not going to use the siphon for this part, but I will use it later for this bucket. Um, I will use a spoon because I'm going to have to add my sugar to this and stir the sugar around to get the sugar mixed through all the beer before I bottle. So, we're going to put that in there. Um, tubing I don't necessarily need yet. The tubing is actually going to be part of this, which will go in that bucket. So, I can put that in there or not. Um, actually, wait a minute. Yeah, no, I'll need this for the bottling bucket. So that's going to go in there. Uh, we need our bottling wand, which is basically just a, a hard tube with a boop, boop, plunger on it. Uh, this is a fun utensil. Uh, so this is that little thing I talked about earlier that clips to your bucket and just holds your hose. Why not sanitize it? Uh, bottle capper. Doesn't necessarily need to be sanitized, but I feel like since this is going to touch all my bottles, uh, I almost feel like it should be sanitized, so I usually just kind of stick that down in there and at least let the bottom half of it get sanitized well. Um, and we're going to need bottle caps. So in this case, we've got 60, roughly 60 bottles. So these bags, uh, when you get a kit from Brewer's Best, you get 60 caps in a box. So we'll just dump all 60 in there and just stir them around and let them sit. Again, this only needs to sit for about three minutes before they go on your bottles. And it's gonna take us way longer than three minutes to get our beer out of that bucket and into them bottles. So we'll cut this open, put it in there, and uh, we'll be back momentarily. Our bottling bucket has now been sitting with sanitizer in it, and every couple minutes I pick it up, I shake it around, and I make sure the liquid gets all the way up around here and then falls back down the bucket. And then I like to occasionally just sort of pick it up, set her up here and flip the nozzle and just let some run off. And then with my rubber gloves on, I kind of clean the nipple a little bit. Make sure that that's cleaned off good too. Because eventually I'm going to put a hose right over top of that. And I want it to be free of any bacteria. So we've been shaking that around. That's going to get dumped back in here with all my instruments and caps. And uh, then we're going to start letting this guy run down into my bucket. Right now I'm just sort of letting all the sanitizer drip and run out of the bucket. Uh, and I don't have to get every single drop out. This is no rinse sanitizer. Uh, very important that you don't rinse it out because putting fresh water into your bucket might bring in bacteria. Don't do that. Um, also, sometimes you start throwing beer in here and there's still a couple drops of sanitizer and you get a little bit of foam, especially if uh, the beer is moving really quick into the bucket. Um, so there's a saying in this business and that is, don't fear the foam. So sanitizer is uh, not going to kill you. Uh, perfectly healthy to drink. It's just very salty. Um, this is a hose that I had attached to my pump. And I kind of did this off camera without thinking. But I like to pump a little bit of sanitizer into the line and just sort of let it sit there. Now I'm not going to use that siphoning hose. But I did use it to get sanitizer into my my hose, so my whole hose can sit there with sanitizer in it for, again, two to three minutes because I will use that hose to bottle once I'm in my bucket. Now it's a very exciting moment in the process. I'm going to loosen the cap 
just to let some air in. Uh, in fact, it wouldn't hurt to maybe pop the cap off and stick my nose in there. It smells like beer. And I'm just going to sort of set that back on there. And I need to let my beer flow down in the bucket. And that's how I do it. Isn't that great? While that's happening, let's go over here and this is my sugar solution, which is now cooled off. And when we're all done there, we're going to stir that together with my spoon, which doesn't quite fit in the cooler, but I like to run, run sanitizer up and down the shaft of that spoon a couple times there and just sort of let it rest. But this is what I'm going to use to stir that together when it's all in there. So if I was a little better at this, I'd do that. A lot of times they say, you know, make sure the beer runs down the side of your bucket. And I suppose the reason they say that is because if you don't, look at all that foam I got. So, yeah. There, that's better. So this is a, a two-gallon container. It actually holds about two and a half, but you got to have overhead. So it is truly a two-gallon fermenter. Um, if you have one-gallon kits, uh, of course, you can still use a two-gallon container. And there's actually marks on the back of this for a one-gallon. So, again, I like these things. They're kind of silly looking. Um... But useful and uh, I've been using this for years now and I have yet to have to replace uh, the rubber gaskets on this thing like it just doesn't leak so all right once that's drained in the bucket we'll move ahead to the next step that didn't take long so there I've got uh, oh let me spin the spin around here look got marks on the side of the bucket I got a little more than two gallons not sure how that happens <laughs> it's just only be two gallons total uh, oops. So maybe these markings aren't all that accurate on the back of this thing, huh? Anyway, so about two gallons of beer with the one cup of sugar I added to it. And if you look down in the bottom of this, uh, this is what we call the trube. And, uh, this is what makes these containers kind of fun to use is they've got that little reservoir in the bottom. And the trube just sort of gathers in there. So, um, what's in the trube? A combination of yeast. So there's a yeast cake in there, and some brewers would actually scoop that out, uh, throw it in the fridge, and recycle it for another next brew. Um, could also contain some grain particles, that's certainly in there. And depending on uh, how you did your extract brewing process, there might be some hot particles in there too. So a lot of times, uh, you know, with the cost of yeast, what it is, we just pitch it, we throw it out. So I'm going to, and that's what I'll do with it, I'm going to get my, use my little sprayer hose there. And just spray that out really good and clean it with just a drop or so of dish, uh, dish soap. Um, and then when it's time to use it again to put, you know, fresh wort into, um, we'll actually sanitize it and, and get it ready again. So next step for us is going to be getting that hose off there, emptying out all the, the uh, sanitizing fluid out of the line. We're going to attach our hose to our bottling bucket, uh, which on our nozzle right there. And then uh, we're going to start putting in bottles. Let's show you a little bit of a different situation. This is a five gallon bucket with about four gallons of beer in it. It's ready to be bottled. Um, in this case, we are going to actually have to use our siphon pump. So I've had this sitting in sanitizer. I've cleaned it all out since our last uh, um, bottling excursion. And I've run some clean sanitizer back through it. And it's just sort of been sitting there and and uh, getting sanitized. So uh, should be ready to go now and we'll have to empty that out. Um, and so this is what you're probably gonna be used to. You're probably gonna be bottling five gallons of beer at a time. So you've got your little uh, <clears throat> bubbler on the top of your bucket and you gotta remove that. And so I just sort of twist and throw that in the sink for now. We'll have to pop the top. We'll have to sink that down inside and we'll start suctioning. All right. I'm about to start the siphoning process, and I like to mention this cap. There's a little cap at the end of this that pops off pretty easily. Um, it's not just a shipping piece. Uh, this cap actually prevents just a little bit of a seal, which is all you really need to keep the junk from getting collected. So this is a secondary fermentation. That means we've already uh, moved this from one bucket to another bucket, 
a couple weeks ago. And we did that uh, for a couple reasons. One is to leave some of the gunk behind from the bottle of the, the bucket. So there's not going to be a whole lot of gunk to, con to collect from this. Um, it also gives us a chance to add something in. So this was a whiskey barrel stout. So we actually added whiskey barrel chips into this uh, when we secondary fermented it. Another reason you do a secondary fermentation is it gets the yeast moving again. The yeast uh, eventually goes to sleep. It doesn't die. It just sort of takes a rest at the bottom of your bucket. And when you move it from one container to another container, that's just enough movement to get the yeast moving again. And if we had a bubbler back on top, um, we would see in a day or two, or even a couple hours, uh, that it'll start bubbling again because the yeast goes right back to work. So several reasons why you might go from one container to another after five days or a week of sitting in the bucket. So anyhow, we did that. This is the end result. This has uh, been fermenting for a couple weeks. And uh, boy, does it smell good. So we're going to get our siphon right down in there. And again, this is fully sanitized, been sitting in the sanitized container for a while. And I'm going to give it a couple pumps. And I'm going to let it sit right down to the bottom of the bucket. And in goes the beer. And so we're supposed to kind of splash this down the sides of the container. And that's how we're going to do it. I'll pull my hose up there. And you can see that little red doohickey there. That's my little four dollar attachment that uh, keeps your hose from bouncing around when you're trying to do this one-handed. Next steps, we're going to stir it together. So I got my, my stirring utensil right here. It's been sitting in the sanitizer for a long time. And the reason we do this is because I added sugar water down to the bottom when I had maybe half gallon of uh, beer in there. And now that I got all my beer in there, I need to stir it up. I need to get it it all mixed together because that sugar is what's going to actually uh, create the carbonation in our beer. So it's important that all the beer be carbonated the same way. All right, so the next thing I'm going to need to do is I got to break this off of here. This has been, uh, you know, I pumped this thing full of sanitizer and now I got to get all the sanitizer out of my line and I'm just going to let gravity do the work. There we go. So this line is going to attach directly to my bottling bucket. And again, this is the only thing that makes a bottling bucket different than a fermenting bucket is it's got this little uh, nozzle on the front of it. And uh, eventually you'll have to replace these rubber seals. I just throw that out there. I've had the same rubber seals on here for about a year and still no leaks. Nice. Uh, we're also going to use a bottling wand, which is this little instrument. And uh, I like to kind of turn that upside down and push the button a couple times to get all the sanitizer fluid out of there. But again, sanitizer fluid ain't going to hurt you. So if there's a couple drops left, that's fine. And this is all food, food grade stuff. And then uh, sometimes if you have trouble getting your, your tube connected to this, if you hold this under hot water, this tubing becomes really soft and it just falls on there. But I found just the right amount of pressure and wiggling were attached. And then I'm just going to kind of rest that on my sanitizer cooler here. And we're ready to uh, bottle. So the next steps will be I'm going to release this. The, the beer is going to flow right down through these pipes. And gravity will do the work. Um, sometimes helps if you get this a little higher to get, it, get the fluid moving quicker. I found this works just, just fine at this level. But I'm going to sit down here. And then my assistant, who is my camera woman, uh, she's going to be handing me bottles and then setting them back on the counter. And we're just going to go empty bottle, fill it up, push it aside. And it's, uh, it's an assembly line process. So the nozzle is in the on position. Beer has started to flow through uh, our tubing here. And it's not until I let the air out that the tubes actually start to fill up. So this first bottle might be a little sudsy because the air is pushing down in there but yeah these bottling wands are great you just sort of uh, push to the bottom of the bottle and you're doing kind of a reverse filling motion notice we're using some big bottles big bottles are fun because it's roughly two beers so when you're measuring this out this is two full pint glasses of beer right here um, another fun thing about these magic wands is they leave just the right amount of headspace in the bottle 
you know, if we filled this thing to the absolute top, we would be in trouble because uh, the fermentation is still happening in these things. So that's what allows us to carbonate our beer. So there's got to be a little bit of headroom in there, and this leaves just the right amount. So basically the size of this tube and attachment uh, amount for the right amount of headspace in a bottle. Fun to know. So we're going to repeat this process for the big bottles, the little bottles. Uh, we're basically going to do it till our beer runs out. Let's talk about what happened over the break. We filled all these bottles up. This is quite a bounty for two gallons of beer. Not bad. Uh, and I've gone ahead and rinsed out my bucket. Uh, I will sanitize it here shortly because we have a whole nother brew to do. We got another five gallons. Well, four gallons and some change. Um, so I went ahead and rinsed out my tubing. I rinsed out my bottling wand and I threw it right back into the sanitizer. And then my bottling buddy said, hey, I want some more big bottles for the next batch. So I got a couple, a couple of those sunk in my sanitizer solution. So the next thing I need to do is get them caps out. And I usually just throw out a dish towel and dump all them caps into a towel. And then I'm just going to cap these one at a time, hand them off to uh, my bottling buddy. And she's going to carefully put them away, label them, dry them off, and box them up to be sent off to our uh, upstairs rooms where they will be sitting at around 70 some degrees for the next week to two weeks and fermenting in the bottle. Final step of the process, gang. We gotta bottle these suckers. So I got my bottle caps out of the sanitizer while I still have my gloves on. Gloves are off now, baby. Uh, what you need is a cap. I'm gonna drop it right onto my capper. And it's got a magnet on it. Look at that. And then we're gonna put a bottle onto my towel. And I just fold a dish towel in half uh, because my counter is super slick. And sometimes the bottles wanna get out from under me when I put pressure down on them. So bottle cap in the capper goes on the top of the bottle and then I just sort of go down both sides and apply equal pressure Kapow. and then we just do one after the other. Big bottles work just the same way. Now we do sometimes have uh, some special, these are like some darker bottles, actually came from Jackie O's. Uh, my wife and filmographer loves these bottles but they are a little tougher to cap because the necks are shaped weird. So if you run into that these, uh, these cappers are actually adjustable. You just sort of grab this part and turn it like a corkscrew. And you can turn it up, turn it down, and that actually changes the, uh, the height difference between this part and this part. So sometimes you just have to make some adjustments to fit the bottles. But once you get it to where it feels comfortable going down on the bottle, that's usually it. You generally don't have to make a whole lot of changes after that. And uh, if you ever think maybe it didn't, didn't hold well, you can always turn the bottle upside down and go, looks good. All right, so those will get uh, dried down, tops will be labeled, and uh, they'll go in a box, and then we'll carry them all up into a, a, a cool, dark place, and we'll let them sit for about one to two weeks.